Hi guys, welcome to the video. This is my solo run of the the mission uh, zero hour uh, for the the outbreak perfected exotic pulse rifle. I've already done the warlock, so this is the hunter. I'll be switching between arc and void. I'll switch to void at the tank room after I've took the ads out. We're still using long shadow primary sniper. We'll still be switching between subtle calamity, mananin, recluse, and oxygen. Twenty one percent delirium and the whisper. And I'll be switching between, obviously I'll start with the Raiden Flux, but I'll be switching to a Legendary Chestplate. And I'll be switching between the, to the Stompies and then Orpheus Rig. I have Machine Gun Reserves, Sniper Reserves, Special Ammo Finder and Heavy Ammo Finder all on the armor. And I have, I think I've got bow uh, Scout Rifle Reserves and Submachine Gun uh, Aim thing <laughs> on, on the chestplate. Uh... Just making the submachine gun more enhanced, enhanced submachine gun dexterity, I think it is. So, roughly the same way at the start. Uh, we'll take, we, we've, we've uh, took the first set of, we've took the first set of shanks down at the back, then we took the sniper shanks, then we went after our captain. Now, the cool, the bet, the thing that I noticed straight away that was really cool about the, the hunter, and it's not, it's not, it's nothing really cool, it was just it really helped was dodge reload because reload machine guns can be a pain in the backside and i said in the warlock video which if you haven't checked it out everybody that's watching this has probably already seen it uh i said about running over ammo reloads the the delirium special ammo but you guys probably know that i'm just for edification sake I'm I'm just reiterating the special. We've now changed the oxygen because now we're going to be dealing with solar and arc. So I never changed off my heavy. So I kept my kill and tally at times three, which as you'll see here, makes light work. And if you use, makes light work of the shanks, but if you use it like a pulse rifle, you can map with it. So we've took out a sniper and you can see how easily it's kind of, even just, even just feathering the, the fire button. How easily it took down the, sh the 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 saber shank, so that's the left side all dealt with from here. Now we're going to take the snipers out up top, the sniper shanks. So what we'll do, we've got five snipes, and shanks have no crit points, so we're not going to be because I've got triple tap, so I'm not going to get that extra round back. So we'll reload with sniper, grab any special we see about, and we'll jump up. I'll put my arc bolt grenade down. That takes out all the shanks. So, same as before, we'll take this shank out from here, reload, go after the next shank. And then once we've, now unlike the last run, it's kind of back back to front because of the shields. Last time I put a warlock grenade, the void grenade down here, which dealt with the two vandals. But because I had an arc grenade, we put it on the shanks. So now I'm going to change the whisper, I'm not going to need the delirium now. And hopefully, which we do, we'll get a full magazine, which means at the boss... At the tank room, not the boss. At the tank room, we don't have to go searching for heavy ammo to take the, the tank down. So when we get in here, we're going to take down the snipers that are uh, kind of in the at the back, up top on ledges. We'll take all those snipers and the two sniper shanks. Then we'll take any solar shanks that are blocking our approach to the servitors and the ads that are on the platforms. So as you can see, we'll just take these snipers out. Take this down with the oxygen because I like to try at least to try and get rims back with the sniper. And with triple tap, you have a little bit of time. I just seen heavy drop there, but I, I guess some of you guys have worked this out for yourselves anyway. When the when the when the when the the tank does its kind of it's I don't know it's not really a melee attack, but that kind of its version of a stomp. It knocks all the ammo away. So what we'll do is we're going to pop pop a super dodge, which gives us that damage field on hits. And now we're just going to attack these ads. Now I thought because I used so much super at that part, I thought I wasn't going to get them. But we were lucky because the top section, are, the, the enemies are quite close. So there was one more shank, take him out because we've still got the oxygen on and we're just going to check, make sure 
I nearly made the mistake of going in and changing, then I realised there might be shanks down here. There was, there was one. Now we can change, and we're going to change to Night Stalker, which we'll put with Stompies on, because that's what we'll need first, and then the Recluse. So, now we're going to take the tank out. So, same place. Just proc Whispered, and then take a leg down. It's three shots to take the leg with Whisper Breathing, with, with Whisper with full Catalyst. And then it's eight crits on its open section, its crit section, to actually kill the tank. When you kill it, if you're using the Recluse like I am, it procs Master of Arms, because any, a kill with any weapon procs it. Which, Master Master of Arms make that's what makes this go, this uh smg so good because it's it's like it's like the suppose they're all variations of rampage the killing tally and master arms it just increases its damage and it really increases it it goes from being just kind of a, a cool smg to being an absolute monster there we go and that is this section done. Now we'll pick up all we're special. We've got full heavy. And as you can see, it doesn't happen very often. But I had another brick of heavy lying down. Crazy. Not getting heavy ammo at this part has stopped more runs than anything else. Now, what we're going to do, we've got a grenade and we will use it. So he's going to run back in and then he's going to, no, I better come back and I'll put the grenade down. Dodge reload. And as you can see, it absolutely destroys. And when you've got that master, master of Arms perk, it's even better. So there's three ads right here, and then there's three ads at the back. We'll take those down. It doesn't... I'm not looking for style points. Uh, so I wasn't too bothered that the first couple of shots weren't headshots. So, but I tried to make the, the next one's headshots. Just ammo conservation. The more crits I can get... In a short space of time, the more more ammunition I'm going to get back. So with the Warlock run, I died at the fans. And I did state that I never die at the, at the fans. And I didn't die at the fans in this run. But I did die at the boss because I changed the routine, as I said. And basically what i done was, and I'll explain this while we're running through this part. Because there's no real strategy here. You just run through and kill all these ads. What i done was, after you kill the last server... The next time you get the boss to move, which from the position that the boss starts in, it would be the right side. When you get him to move, that, that activates the tanks. Instead of focusing on the tanks, I thought I would ma try and be super efficient and take the shanks down first. Because I was already in position up on the platform that I'm going to attack the tanks from. That gave the right hand tank the chance to get a bead on me and start shooting. I moved out the way of the shots, tried to take them down, and got in the got pushed myself into the sights of the left hand tank, who was already charging his big heavy hit. So the moral of the story is when you find something that works, don't deviate. Just try and shave little bits of time off. Become more efficient within your strategy. If you find a strategy that works, don't just because I don't know, it, it can be a real problem. Where you find a, find a strategy that's working and then you break the strategy. Because you, you want to shave time off. You want to become more efficient. If you find something that works, stick to the plan and try and find the areas where you can actually you know, shave time off. Now, when you get to this jump, jump onto here. You'll see there's like a little, this little, uh, I don't know what you could call it little track going down the wall if you use that as your reference point that will take you right to the main platform i have been really lucky and jumped straight straight up onto the main platform but uh it doesn't onto the platform i jump up from but it doesn't happen very often with the stompies you really need just need one jump and then you can mantle this saves you you know it, it does save a bit of time when you don't have to double jump i mean that's a couple of seconds if you can save a couple of seconds on each jump, each jumping section, before you know it, you've got an extra minute at the boss. That's the fine margins that you deal with. Now, here we go. This is the way I normally do the fans without dying. I jump in, turn, turn one side, and then turn 
Like I make sure I'm facing sideways when I get into the, the gully and then turn round and boost. Very simple. Very simple. And that's how I normally do it. Now I did have a bit of a clutch moment here, but yesterday when I was doing my runs, I, as I say, I got a couple of good completions, but just a couple of silly mistakes. It was getting really late. It was like half past four in the morning and I was still trying to do it, get the perfect run. And I was like, so tired i died yesterday at that part because and this will happen and you guys have experienced it i know you have it kept taking my first boost away from me annoying so we're heading towards trevor the strategy in trevor i explained during the wallop run but for anybody that never seen the wallop run if you follow the route that i thought that i take you will never you like me won't have to hide from trevor again so you get here Wait for him to pass, drop down and follow him. This takes you to the left side. So we'll do L1, L2. Then we'll come back. We'll cut across the centre. Go right, do R1. Then up to R2 and then out. And you'll never have to hide from Trevor. Because you completely miss his rotations. Now I have a feeling, knowing Bungie, that they can't really do anything to nerf this section. Because a lot of people know about this now. I think they'll change the rotation of Trevor. So that Trevor... You are going to have to face him no matter what way you go. But at the moment, this is the way it is. And for anybody that follows me on Twitter, you might have seen that just for anybody that's interested or people that have got to that and they're doing that regular, I I put the ARC floor plan. I put it up on Tuesday. So if you guys are interested in what the new floor plan is or anything like that, you should check out the Twitter. I always try and put not just a graph of what it looks like. I put me actually doing it. So... That might be helpful for some people. So, here we are. We've cut across the centre. It's not very difficult. It's actually easier on the, on the hunter because of the hunter's jump. It makes a lot of those precision jumps easier and more effective than the warlock. Because the warlock, I mean, it kind of floats. So, you don't have that height to float in that jump. Jumping across there because of that netting that's above us. You have to do the kind of forward momentum jump where you press the jump button wait a millisecond press it again and instead of going up you get boosted forward but it's something to learn it's it's reminiscent of the the timing's reminiscent of titan skating from d1 without the constant button press if you were just wanting to do that hover along the ground jump that the hunt the titan does the, the warlock jumps very kind of similar so now that we're on the the left we're going to change to the arc mananin and we'll put the orpheus rig on now now, this strategy for doing it, it's not my strategy. It's the way I do it. I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't know. I, don't, I haven't watched any other runs. So I guess a lot of people are doing it like this on the Hunter. Basically, when you get in, you want to move the boss from the areas. You want to move the boss from the areas where you're going to be attacking the Servitors before you attack the Servitor. Now, I, I actually thought I'd got him to move from the first area but he wasn't he was there which is what which explains what happens in the first area to start with i have to retether because the boss soaks up the additional damage and because he's so tanky it's it's real damage that he can he can soak up if he's not there it's like three hits on the server will kill all the shanks but if he's there he takes the additional damage and the shanks don't get really affected by it so a couple of the primary snipers will make him move if you hit him with the whisper, three whisper shots brings the second servitor out. It puts him all the way round. So it's worth using your primary sniper just to put three headshots on him and get him to go to the next section. So when we drop down here, it's going to be the exact same strategy. Turn round, move to the back so that the snipers don't, you don't start getting hammered with grenades and snipers. You can just attack a little bit more safely from here as you can see you're just out of the reach of the snipers we aren't going to go for the turrets because the the mission doesn't class them as ads so and, and to be fair all your fighting is going to be done from either here or down at the sides in cover from the, the turrets so we'll take out these uh dreg there'll be two on the, the left i think i miss one as well and i'll get him just after we've dealt with the boss or after we've dealt with the the shrieker the not shrieker the server so as you can see 
I thought he was going to teleport, and I waited this time for for the servitor to teleport. Wait for him to teleport before you before you actually uh, tether. Now, as you can see, all they're all still up. Now the boss has moved to the back of the map, so we're going to tether him again, and that's what should happen. So basically, I hit him with the primary sniper a couple of times. It killed the shanks, which put the damage back on him. As you can see, the boss did move eventually. It put the damage back on him, which killed him. So it doesn't quite work as that well with the second server in respects to the the damage coming back on the server, killing them. But it definitely works that that the same way for killing the, the shanks. So again, we want to move boss from this area get three snipes on him so i get one back because if you kill these shanks whilst the server whilst the boss is still there they'll come back their their, their spawning rate is linked to him which is why as you'll see at the end i don't take the cell the, the 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 arc shanks out until the boss is down because they will come back so we need to get the boss to move so we don't have the same issue so a couple of primary snipes that should be all we need. Two snipes. Now what we're going to do is get into a bit a better position for cover. Tether. Now I've got 11, 11 whisper. So one one charged whisper shot. See how much damage that put back on him. So I don't really want to waste too many shots. And note to self: make sure you know if you <laughs> make sure if you've got fastball on that you remember you've got fastball on. That's the first time I forgot I've had it on, but it's not going to be the last. I completely forgot I had fastball on and just <laughs> threw, my, threw my grenade over the server at the wall. So we'll make the... So the boss is going to move, which activates the tanks, and this is where I died. So instead of getting ready to take the tank, I took the shanks. Now the tank is active and he's aiming. Those shots will kill me if they hit me. I've moved out to the right. I'm just hitting the boss, but because I moved out to the right and put myself in the viewpoint of the second tank. Not a good idea. So when you get to that point, leave the shanks. Just go after the tanks. You know, if I'd have done that, the first tank would be down. I'd be working on the second tank. No biggie because we still get it done. No biggie. When did I become a hipster? <laughs> when did I think I was like 18? Some somebody 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 pointed out uh, a regular a regular on the channel who shall remain nameless, but you'll probably see in the comments. Pointed out, I think that I said simples in the last video or something. <laughs> uh, I don't know why I say stuff like that, but it's all good. It's all good. Gives you something to talk about. So the first tank's down, and we were in cover from the second tank. So now we'll just whisper, breathe, and proc. Take down the leg, and then we can move out. This is roughly where I would have been when he took me out. And the blast radius of their big attack, it wouldn't even have mattered if he'd have hit me dead on or hit me the vicinity, it would have killed me. So as he if he can't see you, he won't fire at you. Simple. Simple. Not simple. So, <laughs> so we've got these invisibles. Now, fastball. What are you doing? As you can see, I hit him, I hit him with the smoke. And because it's got explosive rounds, it's knocked him off the side. He will come back. There he is. And he's got nothing left. So, And we've got energy. And that's what I really wanted was energy. So now it's all about putting it on the boss. Now what I do, as you'll see, just as his shots are getting to me, I will, I will move. I'll move left or right. I'll always try and make sure I get that shot back. Always make sure I try and get the three shots. So we've moved. And then I'm straight back on them. And you just have to get into a rhythm of moving and then hitting them. It takes a bit, I suppose, to hit them like that takes a bit of practice. But I'm sure you guys will be fine. Practice makes perfect, right? He's down. I'm going to fall off the edge looking for the Vandal. <laughs> I think can't get back up. Uh, got one Vandal, two Vandals, and the Shanks. 
and then that's this run finished. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I hope this helps some of you guys with strategies, especially using Tether and using Hunter. I'll try and get the Titan one done uh, over the weekend, but I've just been helping so many people actually get the gun that I haven't been able to do some of the content I've wanted to do. Let me know in the comments how you guys are getting on with it. Uh, are you still struggling to get the weapon? Let me know. Thanks a lot for watching. I appreciate all the support you gave me in the last video. Hopefully we can do something similar with this. Take it easy, guys, and I will see you in the next one.